यूपीएससी के अकॉर्डिंग इम्पोर्टेंट कंटेंट पाने के लिए ईजी क्लासेस को जरूर सब्सक्राइब कर लें और बेल आइकन भी प्रेस कर दें जिससे कि नोटिफिकेशन मिलता रहे Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to begin our ethics, ethics classes, and uh, as Plato, the philosopher, the great philosopher like Plato, has said that one should read ethics throughout the life because it rectifies. time to time your actions and yourself and you so so let us begin ethics the very first thing is literal meaning so first thing we will try to understand the literal meaning of ethics the literal meaning of ethics is as an ethics six term has been derived from ethics is derived from the greek word ethica ethica and this ethica is again derived from ethos it derived from ethos and what's the literal meaning of ethos the literal meaning of ethos is the customs habits and uses ethos customs habits of men and uses also known as uses and uh, so this is the literal meaning and uh, again it is this ethics is known as the moral philosophy ethics is also known as moral philosophy ethics is known as moral philosophy this moral term is again this is derived from the greek word greek substantive word and uh, this moral is derived from your latin word it's known as moral philosophy and uh, the moral term is derived from mores mores also literally means the same thing customs habits of people and uses so we can say the literal meaning of ethics is the science of customs so the literal meaning of ethics is science of custom why it is science we will discuss science of customs and now what is custom then what is custom what are the customs custom is defined as the habitual ways of acting so it's a hab habitual ways of action are the habits of men it's a habits 
of men and are you can say the habitual ways of action habitual ways of acting of men and uh, this custom is not only the habits of men but it is also known approved by the society that's the thing we have to understand it is also approved by the society this is not only the habits of the people it's not only the habits of the people but it is also approved by the society that particular society so there is approval and this approval makes it you know the ethos this approval makes it you know the social norms and this is the root of your this is the root of your uh, ethics you can say so approval and so it is approved by the society you know it is approved by the society and uh, okay so this is the literal meaning of ethics and now come to definition what are ah oh, second thing we will discuss the definition if we talk about the definition of ethics okay let me write in right manner definition to define it let me discuss few things as we know that it is the science of custom the literal meaning says the science of custom and what are the customs customs are the habitual ways of act, action of people of men and what are the habits then habits are just try to understand habits are you know the settled disposition habits are the settled disposition of will so it's a settled disposition of will and uh, so what is will then settled so disposition of will is also known as your character so habit makes a character so and what is will will is the, we have defined the habits habits as a settled disposition of a will then comes will what is will will is a self in an action when self is an action is known as will when self is an action is known as a will okay and this habitual ways of feeling are the settled disposition of our mind settled disposition of our willing also makes a character so what is character then so it also makes a character and what is character then character is you know the permanent settled habits of will it's a settled habits of will now earlier we have defined the habits and now we are defining the character then we say the settled habits of it's a settled habits that's the difference you can see between the habits and character over here this habit is a settled disposition this is the settled disposition Settled dispositions of will, and the character is a settled habits of willing, a settled disposition of habits. So the term habit is used over here. Now you can see the difference between the different. And now what is then conduct? Just try to understand the conduct. What is conduct then? conduct is a you know the counter part of your character it's a counter part of your character counter part of your character and it's a practical aspect ex external aspect character is a internal aspect it's nothing but your thoughts it's internal aspect and uh, this conduct is a external aspect so the conduct is your action and this is thought it's action 
reads and it's a thought the way you think this is character okay so and uh, so what is when what what we study as you know that the ethics is a science of conduct so, and conduct uh, when we define conduct along with it we define a character so now we can say that ethics is a science of conduct and character okay conduct and character fine and now go further how we define it how we study it this with respect to what we do in ethics we call it whether right or wrong we evaluate the action we evaluate the conduct or a character of a person so when we evaluate the character or a conduct it's known as your ethics and how you know how how we evaluate character or a conduct we evaluate the character or a conduct of a person with respect to right and wrong we call it this action is right try to understand right and the notions of right and wrong with the notions of right and wrong we evaluate so ethics evaluate the character and conduct with reference of these two notions just try to understand these two notions with the help of these two notions we call it whether the conduct is correct character is right are wrong and this right or wrong are you know the uh, are correct or incorrect are always defined so we can say that this ethics is a science of evaluation of character and a conduct with reference to right and with the help of with the notion of right and wrong are by the evaluating them right or wrong go further then further we say this right and wrong presupposes what is right and wrong right means right the term right is derived from the root word rectus rectus means so it is straight forward straight forward means what what is according to rule okay and wrong wrong is just only a verb it supposes it were a word of your right right is a primary notion okay so right and wrong but right and wrong are defined right and wrong are also known as the subordinate of good so it's also subordinate of good why we perform the right action why we should perform the right action in order to attain some good end so right and wrong these notions these your notions you know are in order to they presuppose the notion of good and now you can understand this notion of good is the locus of morality later on when we will be discussing the kant then you will know that kant will say that the good the notion of good lies in human conscience and even today and in every movement and in every action you always think about whether it is right or wrong and what's the basis to call it right or wrong is nothing but your the notion of good So always in every action and in every movement and everyone is pursuing nothing but the good. No matter whenever he is commit wrong, no matter when he commits something wrong, but still he wants to his personal good, and that's why he commits some wrong. So the notion later on, what is the locus of entire human thought is nothing but the good. So good is the prime notion of ethics. Now I think you understand. and now this good ultimately then a thick tries to define good and along with it also tries to define the highest good also tries to define the highest good okay and also we can define it as now we are reaching to its definition earlier we have called it the study of character and conduct then we have called it the study of at very first moment we have called it the science or study of custom then we have called it the study of the science of custom and character then we have then we have defined it as the study of the character and a conduct of people 
by evaluating with the notions of right and wrong or you can say with the reference of notion with the reference of right and wrong. Then further we have defined it as <coughs> ethics is a science of the ideals, ethics is the, uh, the study of the human character and a conduct with reference to right and wrong in order to pursue the good or absolute good. This is the definition. So, that is why in short, Mackenzie has defined it, it as it is a science of the right and wrong in a human life or it is science of the ideals involved in human life. So, the finally, you, we can define in a shard as Mackenzie has defined it. So, it is a Mackenzie. Mackenzie is a person who defines it as, you know, it is a, it's a science of study of ideals. Ideals. It is a science of it is a science of the ideals involved in human life and he has also given another definition. This is the second one, but the first one, okay, in any order. Earlier he have said that it is a study of the human conduct with reference to right and wrong, with reference to ideals. So, in short we can say it is a science of ideals in involved in human life. Or it's a study of the human. It's a study of the human conducts with reference to ideals. With reference, but you know this definition is not sufficient to describe it because it, this definition is it is this definition doesn't emphasize on the evaluating part evaluation. The important function of ethics is to define the ideals as well as evaluate the human actions. So, this definition is of course, one of the best definition, but still you have to understand, we have to understand that ethics of course, is a science of ideals and it tries to define the ideals, that is it. But it evaluates, but we what we but but generally people evaluate the action of others on the basis of these ideals. So, concern of ethics is to define the ideals. So, Mackenzie's definition is another you know, very appropriate, is a very appropriate as far as the evaluation is concerned that is evaluated by the men, by the people on the basis of the standards, on the basis of the ideals which are defined by the ethics. So, the concern of ethics is to only study, to study the conducts and character of a people and define the ideals. What should be, what should their character, what kind of action we should perform and this is the ethics I think. Uh, now, when we will discuss in detail later on, then things will be clear. Now, this is the later meaning and definition. Now, move further. What is ethics? Now, here it is very clear that it is a normative science. So, now we are moving. What kind of science it is? Normative science. normative science and first thing whether we should call it science, we will discuss in detail, but right now yes why not it is science because it aims you know it aims a systematic knowledge. Systematic knowledge. And any discipline which aims a systematic knowledge, so in that sense it is known as a science as this your sociology uh, and uh, your political science or politics and uh, your psychology, these are known as science, you know. So, 
in same sense it is also known as a science, but not in a sense of you know the natural science. We will discuss what kind of science it is. It is called science only because that it is a systematic study of human, human conduct and character. So, it has explanation. So, there is explanation, observation, explanation and classification. So, there is observation, you know and uh, explanation and uh, your classification. You know that is why it is known as it is a that is why it is known as a science just like your sociology just like your politics just like your psychology uh. and uh, now come to this point it is known as a normative science what is normative science normative science means it evaluates there is evaluation it has norms and first thing it there is what are the norms we will discuss first thing there is a evaluation it evaluates it evaluates there is evaluation evaluation of what of human uh, human conduct and a character okay so there is evaluation of human correct human conduct and a character okay and now so, this it is known as a normative science and now you can understand other sciences like sociology, psychology, they discuss the facts, but normative science does not discuss the facts. It discuss, it is always about what should be rather than what it always discuss what should be rather than what is. So, it is a subject matter is not what is. What is the case is the matter of your, you know, the facts. What is is also known as the fact. So, it is also known as a fact. And what is rather than the ethics discuss what should be. What should be. And uh, on other hand, you know that the at your uh, sciences, other sciences discuss the facts, but ethics discuss the values. What are the values? What are the norms? We will come on it. Now, so, so these values and on the other hand we can say it is a matter of fact and it is matter of values. Okay. And uh, now, this is the normative science, and in normative science, we discuss norm and uh, yeah, we will discuss and we will compare with sociology, with political science, and every discipline. But now, we are confined only with the definitions, so we have to re re you know remain confined only with the definitions. So, this is normative science. Normative science, the prime work of normative science is evaluation. And, uh, now we can say whether it is science or not. Now can it can we call it science or not? And we have given the answer of uh, you know science. It is known as you know there is explanation and There is explanation, classification. Let me switch off it first. Okay, let us go on. Classification. and uh, observation.
observation okay and it's a systematic study it's also known as a systematic study so systematic study of what systematic study of character and conduct you know and uh, that is why we call it science but what kind of science it is normative science or regulative science and normative science and regulative science has three norms there are three normative science just try to understand it's a normative science and normative science has three you know the logic is also abstract the normative sciences are also abstract sciences formal sciences they are known as but when you say the formal sciences are abstract sciences mathematics will be also there so mathematics will be there but as far as the normative sciences are there there are three values the logic is there it's a concern is a truth truth is the ideal and it's a intellectual it's a matter of knowing you know knowing and uh, second thing is your uh, aesthetics and uh, this aesthetic is the matter of you know the its ideal is beauty and uh, this is matter of feeling and uh, then comes your ethics it's a notion is is a prime notion is you know the good and uh, it's a matter of willing so there are three norms and there are three seeking there are three emotions you can say are three kinds of seeking in human nature so always a man wants to know what is truth always man wants to wants to know what to do and always man wants to do uh, to know what wh what has to be acquired what is to acquire so these are the questions and always men have you know always the man have uh, men have been trying to uh, to get the answers of these questions so ethics is concerned with the willing ethics is concerned with the good it's a prime notion is good and it is concerned with the willingness so this is your norm and all are normative science because these are known as your the values so these are the values highest values intrinsic values so these are the values and intrinsic values intrinsic means what the wealth is also value property is prosperity is also value these are known as you know that now health is also value that is known as the bodily values so values are various kind of values but some values are given to you know are, are defined values in order to attain something something else so they are known as the means and they are known as the extrinsic value we will discuss later on these are the extens these are intrinsic values intrinsic values means they are the values in themselves they are not for the sake of anything else that's another matter now knowledge have become knowledge has become you know uh, not the ultimate end our intrinsic end now it has become to means to earn you know to earn more and more money or to attain uh, uh, to to get an, an employment so that's the different thing but now these are the this uh, these are the values which are defined as intrinsic values and uh, okay so normal now can we call it uh, so it's a normative science or regulative science and uh, <coughs> now let us move can be is it a uh, it is is it, it can it be a uh, Uh, compared with your natural sciences no natural sciences like physics chemistry zoology botany 
Or you know the natural sciences describe the facts, phenomena of the world. Natural sciences. Natural sciences like physics, chemistry, geology, botany. Natural sciences, you know, they are concerned, they describe what? The, they describe the facts. What is the case? They describe, you know, the cosmic principles, cosmic principles, you know, and uh, uh, they are concerned only with the matter, what is the case? They are concerned only with the what is the case? What is the matter or what is the case? So, natural sciences, but on the other hand, our ethics is a normative science. Our ethics is a normative science, you know. This is a normative science, and uh, normative science is concerned only with values. Again, there are repetition, you know, the values, and uh, it is not concerned with the facts. So, its prime notion is ought, not to do. So, it cannot be compared with the natural sciences, it is not part of natural science. So, can we call it the part of metaphysics? Can we say that it is a part of metaphysics? We will discuss later on, but now before going to that, uh, first you have, we have discussed the nature of ethics. Now, we are discussing the nature of ethics. Now, come to your, the scope of ethics, uh, the province of ethics. What is, what the subject matter of ethics? First, very first thing we have discussed, the literal meaning of ethics. Then we have discussed the definition of ethics, then we have discussed the nature of ethics. As far as the nature of ethics is concerned, that is known as normative science. Let me, let me, first thing, first thing we have discussed the literal meaning. When you discuss the literal meaning, you know it is known as a science of customs. Science of customs. Definition you have understand, then we have discussed the definition. Second thing, definition. When we talk about the definition, it is known as the study science of ideals involved in ideals involving human life. Then third thing we have discussed. Third thing. We have discussed your the nature, nature of ethics. And when we say the nature of ethics is evaluation, is a normative science. Normative science or evaluation. Okay. And uh, right. And now we are going to discuss the scope or province of ethics. What is the scope or ethics of province means subject matter, the province of ethics. Province or scope of ethics, you know. The province or scope of ethics, what is the subject matter of ethics? If we talk about, if we talk about the subject matter of uh, ethics, you know, it Earlier we have discussed that it is the study of the customs, customs of the people. Second thing you have, we know that it is a study of, you know, the your character and conduct. So, character, province or scope means the subject matter. What is the subject matter? What is the subject matter of ethics, you know, and character? of the people have, you know, character or conduct and of course, habit is included within the character and uh, customs, characters and it also studies, you know, the spring, motive, action, purpose. When you talk about the action, 
then there will be the motive of action. What is the motive of action? Then always there will be intention of action. It is very, these are the very important factors of your ethics. It, it studies the, and also the spring of action. Also the spread of, uh, spring of action, you know, actions. And, uh, and how we studies with the notions of, with the notions of right and wrong. These are the subject matter with reference to right and wrong, correct and incorrect, merit and demerit, right and wrong, you know, um, correct and incorrect, you know, merit and demerit, I am writing in short, correct and incorrect and uh, your uh, another merit and demerit. What is merit? What is demerit? We will discuss everything. We will be discussing everything. So, merit and demerit and of course, then good and highest good. What is good and what is highest good? And in short and brief, we can say this is the subject matter of ethics and also it is connected with the, you know, it has some presumptions, we are going, coming on it. Now, so this is the province or the subject matter of ethics and uh, now, can we call it, uh, science earlier we have, can we call it science, why not? It is, there is a systematic study and uh, of uh, the human character and conduct on the basis of the explanation, observation and classification and try to find out a certain conclusion on the basis of the moral judgments, okay. And uh, we will discuss the moral judgment. Now we are coming on, coming back on your, the ethics uh, province and uh, now can we call it art? Is it art? Of course, it is known as a science, but it is not a part of natural science. So now can we call it a art? No, not as art because there is no art. What's why it cannot be called as art? What's the difference between art and you know? In art, what happens? And uh, as we know that before, okay, it's uh, the you know the when we art has always you know one has to attain the skills. There are two kinds of arts. One is fine art, you know. and industrial art, you know, when we talk about the fine art, fine art, in fine art what do you have? You have to attain some skills to draw a beautiful painting. So you have some desire, some product to attain, to acquire, but in ethics there is nothing to attain, there is not, there is no product at all. So, there is only the effort, there is only the attaining of good, which is an ideal. So, we cannot say that it cannot be compared with the art, it cannot be compared with the fine art. And uh, yes, it is very near as to fine art, it also kind of, you know, attaining the skills, but there is no product. So, only action, that is the difference, there is one, and that is why it also differs with your industrial art. The difference between industry, the problem is you know the product, over here the action is the product. In ethics there is only action, there is only refinement of your action, only refinement of your thought, only refinement, so there is no product, it is not concerned, it is completely abstract you know, the concern, it's, it is, it, it's a concern is a good. Good is the prime concern. So, okay. So, this is, it cannot be called as a part of art. And uh, <coughs> earlier we have discussed that it is not a part of natural science. Can we call it a part of practical science? Can we say that it is nearer to practical science? Just try to understand. Practical science means practical sciences. Can be called practical sciences like your medical science, and uh, uh, and engineering is also practical practical science. 
So it is also near, can be call it a part of practical science? No, not at all. Because again in a practical science, we, we have to operate on some objects, some things. But over here we do not have, ethics does not operate anything on uh, any person. Just its concern is to only define the ideals. It does not suggest anything, it defines only ideals. Its concern is to define the ideals. Try to understand, define the ideals. It does not insist anyone to adopt the ideal or experiment on anyone. So, it is not ex experimental science. Yes, it has indirect bearing on us, it has indirect uh, bearing upon us that we, when we read ethics, then we try to adopt in our life. We try to follow that particular principle, that is another thing, but ethics does not insist on that. The concern of ethics is to only define the ideals. So, it is also not the part of practical science. Earlier we have seen that it is not a part of natural science. And uh, now it's also not a part of and uh, uh, your practical science, and it's not a can cannot be compared with the art. Okay, and uh, try to understand. So, can we say there is any art of conduct? Is there any art of conduct? Is there any art of conduct? Let's try to understand. Again, there is no art of conduct because in art of conduct, so there is no art of living kind of thing. There is no art of conduct. Why there is no art of conduct or art of living? Generally, we call it this art and science of life or an art of life or science of life. That is okay, fine. But the thing is, is there any art of conduct? No. It's a gradual. It's a gradual process. One understand. One understand. Read out seriously the principles of life, and slowly and gradually, and every day and every moment, you know, tries to implement and examine his action. So, in fact, it's not kind of art. It's a kind of learning. So, primarily it is a kind of learning when we implement something, implement something and uh, we see the consequences, then again we examine. So, it is not kind of attaining an art. Okay. So, this is also not of art of, there is no art of conduct and uh, can we call it part of metaphysics? Let's try to understand. Can we say that it is a metaphysics, part of metaphysics? Yes, Mackenzie has called it part of metaphysics. So, can we call it part of metaphysics? Why not earlier it have been studied in, you know, earlier it has been studied in metaphysics. So, Mackenzie is a person, you know, Mackenzie is a man who have regarded as a part of metaphysics, but again you can, but you can differ with the Mackenzie's viewpoint that if now it is considered as a separate and independent discipline. Why separate discipline? Because it has presumed something, it has taken some presumptions from metaphysics, but now it is not considered as a part of metaphysics. It has attained its own status. It is now a, it is studies now a separate discipline. Why separate discipline? Because it remains confined only with the human conduct. That is the reason. It remains confined only with the human conduct, not with the metaphysical doctrines, not with the cosmic principles, nor with the divine principles. No. A Kant is a person who have made the morality is secular. Later on, we will discuss why. So, now, of course, now it has attained uh, the autonomous status. So, it has attained the autonomous status or a separate status. So, it cannot be called. So, Mackenzie is right saying so. Mackenzie is, Mackenzie, uh, you know, um, 
that is a different thing. Mackenzie accepted it as a part of metaphysics. Why part of metaphysics? You know, because you cannot derive any moral principle without a divine principle, but that is another, <coughs> but that is not true, that is not correct. Uh, you can disagree with Mackenzie. Even I am, I, I am very much, you know, agreed, I am very much, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I agree, you know, up to a larger extent. Or you can say the maximum extent to Mukherjee, uh, but but the thing is, it is re now regarded as independent discipline. So we should regard it as independent, discipline. and the, can, the credit goes to Kant. So now, now this is the metaphysics, and um, part of uh, part of metaphysics are not uh, no. It's a it is studies the only human conduct. So of course, it has taken some presumptions from metaphysics. We'll discuss, and uh, now. So, what is now we have to discuss what is the method of ethics just try to understand. So, now we have discussed the nature of ethics, definition of ethics, the little meaning of ethics and now we are going to discuss, now we are going to discuss <coughs> your uh, okay, the method. Now, what is the method of ethics? Methods and uh, as you know, what are the what is the method of ethics? Method of ethics is there is you know the, there are many different various kinds of ethics. And before going to method, let me uh, conclude one thing uh, that the what is the what kind of ethics is what the kind of science the ethics is. The ethics is science you know is a normative science. We have answered it. So the ethics is simply called normative science. It has its own discipline, it's a normative science, it has its own independence, separate existence, autonomy, autonomy, it has its own autonomy. And now, so what are the methods? The first you know that the hist physical or biological method, this physical or biological method is adopted by physical or biological and also you can call it physical and biological, no, no issue. So, this physical or biological uh, method is ad adopted by your Herbert Spencer and Herbert Spencer, his name is no Herbert Spencer and uh, uh, Leslie Stephen also, Leslie Stephens. Leslie Stephens and uh, one more thinker is there, Leslie Stephens and uh, Samuel Alexander is also there, Samuel Alexander, Alexander, these all three thinkers, they, they follow the physical and biological method, they adopted, the, why the, what is the physical and biological method? Physical method talks about the cosmic orders and uh, cosmic orders or cosmic principles, principles, you know, cosmic principles talks about the, so Herbert Spencer says that the th ethics, the human conduct have, human conducts or ethics has been evolved from the animal behavior. So, it goes to biological method. And then further he uh, derived that the biological, uh, you know, the animal behavior is governed by the cosmic principles. So, ultimately, it is a, uh, ultimately he accept it as, actually if you see complete order, he derives uh, the ethical principles from sociological principles, sociological principles from biological principles, biological principles from cosmic principles. So, this is the first method what uh, he has adopted it, but we know that it cannot be adopted. This method is not correct. Why not correct? Because the values never can be derived from the facts. The values never can. Values depends on the human thoughts. Facts ec are expressed outside in the world. What man, what you do is, what one does is not the matter is not the subject matter of ethics. 
the subject matter of ethics is what one should do, what one should do, what ought to be done. So, and this is the value. What you do has no value. What you should do is a value. So, it is concerned with should, not with is. This fact is concerned with is and it is concerned with the should or ought. So, you understand later and again we will discuss. So, this is the first method. Another method is you know, another method, the second method is also known as your sociological method, historical or you know historical or genetic method, better to call it, historical or generic, genetic genetic method. Historical or genetic method again you know th there is the same thinkers Stephen, Leslie Stephen, Herbert and Spencer. So, you know Herbert and Spencer. Again the same thinkers are there. And all of them are there. So, they again they have a dispenser and all of them what they say? Uh, they say that the historical method, they say that they, they examine the root cause of human behavior from the animal behavior, from noble service. So, noble service is touched you know some ways of habitual acting. Then slowly and gradually with the passage of time the ways of action of men, the habitual ways of action of men became the norms. So, they became a norms and once they became rules, then first they become rule and then the social norms. We will discuss you know the customary morality and reflective morality. So, this is right now this is the customary morality, customs derived from rooted in customs. So, noble service, the historical method means the morality is derived from noble service. But when you say that it is derived from the noble savage, just try to understand. When you say it is derived from the noble savage, noble savage means what? But the thing is, okay, but it is of course there is, uh, it is rooted earlier in history. But the problem with the, but the problem with the ethics is that it is always, it is not concerned with the thing that what men have been doing. It is always concerned with what should do. So, the subject matter of ethics is should. So, historical method also cannot be adopted. Yes, it helps in historical method. Why not? Historical method gives us, you know, uh, helps us. And, uh, but ultimately, we have to come on its own method its own method and uh, okay and now see and uh, historical method and then it is known as the psychological method just try to understand. Third method is you know psychological method. This psychological method is given by you. Psychological method says that ethics is a branch of so over here uh, uh, okay psychological method then we say that Now, philosopher like Bentham and Mill, Bentham and Mill, you know, they have not so speak, only Bentham and Mill, they have accepted that psychology should adopt the psychological method because they also accept that the psychology is a branch of psycho the, the philosophy, is, ethics is a branch of psychology. Why? Because how we are, what we do will. This is psychology studies, how we do will. It studies our willing, how we do will. This is the subject matter of, uh, you know, psychology, how we do will. And, uh, but the ethics is, if you say the ethics is concerned with what we should will, 
rather than how do we will, what we do will is not the subject matter of ethics. The subject matter of ethics is what we should will, what we should will. Okay, so it is a matter of what we should do, what we should do, what we should will. Of course, the willing is the study of that, but the both studies, both disciplines study the ethics in a both study, both, both disciplines, you know, uh, studies the will or willing of men, but both studies in different manner. One studies how men do will, another studies what men should do will. Now you can see the difference. So, ethics cannot be called as a branch of philosophy or it cannot be adopted as, it cannot be adopted uh, as uh, your psychological method cannot be adopted for ethics. So, and now, then uh, what is it is a method and now the next one is known as also the metaphysical method, ok. What is the metaphysical method? Last one you can say the meta metaphysical. This metaphysical method is given by your Hegel and uh, all idealists they believe and uh, <coughs> what is the metaphysical method? Metaphysical method is based on you know. And the speculation <coughs> that is a highly conjectural subject based on your speculation and imagination and not imagination based on speculation and logic. So, philosopher like Plato, Aristotle and Hegel they have accepted they have accepted the metaphysical method, but this is not correct, this is not true because it is not part of metaphysics and the subject matter of metaphysics is the world you know the whole world, the world is a subject matter of meta metaphysics and you know within the world three things are there, God, spirit and a matter. This is the thing and spirit further the men are derived from spirit and a matter. So, the point is, but your uh, when we talk about the ethics, ethics is concerned with the man, it is concerned with the human conduct. So, it is not concerned with the divine principles, it is not concerned with the cosmic principles and also it is not based on you know the pure abstraction, it does not go in, it, it does not derive, it, uh, it takes the subject matter of the actual human affair and examines them and examines them, evaluates them. So, metaphysical method also is partially applicable because men are also part of food. So, your metaphysical method is partially applicable, not completely because as far as the metaphysical assumptions are concerned, ethics have taken it, ok. So, this is the uh, this is the thing. So, metaphysical method you understand I think is partially applicable and uh, so, what is a it is a what should its method, what should be its method? Its method should be empirical as well as empirical. Why empirical? Earlier in metaphysics, you know the subject of metaphysics method when we have been discussing the metaphysical method. In metaphysical method, you know the subject matter of metaphysics is the world, you know the whole world. And within this whole world, we consider three things. What three things? Spirit, matter, and God. These three entities are considered in the world. And you know that man is made of a spirit and a matter. A spirit because the consciousness. And God is the ultimate reality, it is considered in metaphysics or the ultimate and this spirit and a matter makes a man. So, but the God, your, the, your uh, 
Ethics is concerned only with the man, not with the God. Divine principle, you know, not with the divine principle, not with your, uh, not with divine principle and not with your cosmic principles. No. So, it is neither the part of your natural sciences, cosmic principles, not the part of metaphysics. It lies in between both of them. Try to understand. Try to understand. On one hand, it is not part of natural sciences because it does not study the natural principles and does not accept that natural princi principles affects the human behavior. So, it is not part of natural sciences. On the other hand, it is also not part of metaphysics. Why it is not part of metaphysics? Because it does not study the divine principles. No, as far as the divine principles are concerned, as far it has taken three postulates. Later on we will discuss. So, it lies in between both of them and that is why its method is empir empirical as well as its method is empirical as well as the metaphysical. Why metaphysical? Because it takes some assumptions from metaphysics. It takes some assumptions. empirical as well as you know you can say transcendental or metaphysical no problem ok so it is a method is empirical as well as the transcendental better to say I would like to call it transcendental always I write the plural Empirical. And as well as we are missing empirical as well as the transcendental. Okay. So this is the method. And now we will discuss what is the uses of ethics and what is the end of the study of ethics. So end of the ethics is the absolute good and the highest good to define to define the highest good and absolute good this is in one word we can say what's the end of ethics end of ethics we talk about and we is to define the good and later on we will see whether the ethics is able to define the good or not and uh, to make the human life meaningful, good and highest good. And highest good. So, ideals, to define the ideals of human life. This is the end of ethics. And why? In order to make the man, in order to make. Uh, to make the human behavior meaningful, worthful, the life should be worthwhile. What we should attain? Always we ask the question, what is good? What we should do? So, what we should do? And what we should attain? And one can say the empirical end is the end of human life. To become an IAS officer is the end. But again, you may ask the question: Why am I become? Why why I want to be uh, become an IAS officer? Definitely, you have some other end because once it means either you want to power, prestige, money, and all that, or you want to all of them, and this is your empirical end. But one can say that the knowledge alone, one can say that nothing will satisfy you. Then you will concern with something else. So, this is the subject matter of ethics, whether your, your, your end should be empirical, what is good? It is empirical end or it is something transcendental. So, this is the subject matter of, this is the end of, end of. So, ethics tries to define the good. 
good means personal good social good and the ultimate good so this is the definition of eth and uh, end of ethics and now the what is the uses of ethics someone may ask the question what is uses of you know uses what's the uses of the ethics study of ethics when you talk about the uses of ethics it set has you know it has a great significance the very first thing it answers what to do first thing it answers what to do what to do and uh, so it answers what should do or what to do what one should do in true sense and uh, second what is the uses it also you know the great thing it rectifies your inconsistency inconsistencies in your customs traditions for example earlier there have been a tradition of there have been a, a regular practice of a child labor there have been a regular practice of you know the child marriage there have been a regular practice of your you know uh, absence of widow marriage and all that so <clears throat> video marriage was prohibited so this so it rectifies the social and political norms social and political norms you know so this is the first thing it make them correct and second important thing you know second important thing the inconsistencies of religion second thing in religion there are many things you know it inconsistencies inconsistencies you know inconsistencies in your uh, in your in your behavior in your social and political thought and even you know your political thought it has great significance great uses because your every discipline whether it is political science whether it is economics they all have taken the concept of for, for example political science take their notions of equality liberty and justice who defines them commonly you think there is no use of commonly we think that there is no great use of ethics but when we go inside and we examine it when we read it out seriously then we got to know that it has a great significance great uses here when you read the philosophy of your constitution you know the philosophy of your constitution is nothing but the human values equality liberty and justice who defines them sir so when you go so when in economics you know social norms political ideals and even in economics to pra in even in economics equitable distribution of everything means and means of product and productions so uh, that is also based on it has also taken it has also presumed the prime notion of justice so and justice is defined by the ethics so it is it has a great significance it gives a ideal for the different disciplines and uh, uses and now you can recall why plato have called that one should read out one should read ethics throughout the life and uh, okay this is the uses and the last is and also in religion so it it gives ideals to your different disciplines in it removes inconsistencies in your human behavior and ultimately it gives you know it ultimately it gives you uh, your uh, rectify the religion you know it also rectify the religion and uh, when it is rectifies the religion and when it rectifies the religion and you know how it many many things earlier we there have been a very immoral practices in religion even in your hinduism sacri animal sacrifices were there and uh, black magic were there and uh, hypnotism but there are so many wrong things in your religion and in your customs are there so it's a uh, 
so it's your uh, you know uh, it removes these all uh, wrong things wrong practices so it remove rectify your religion and now some few, that's why many thinker now say that the morality religion should be based on morality so it leads religion rectifies religion yes religion and morality are comp are compatible with each other but it still be discussed that religion should be moral but that's you know you understand it that we cannot discuss in detail but morality time to time rectifies you know rectifies the religions so this is also there is also a great role uh, of ethics in rectifying you know in rectify rectifying rectifying the religion so there is a great uses of ethics now you can understand so this is to just we have tried to understand the very definition very definition of ethics what is ethics what is ethics just only the thing and further we will discussing still we are within the basics of ethics and um, so next in our next lecture in our next class we will discussing how it is you know related with other disciplines and uh, <coughs> still even we can discuss in you know the very first le lecture that how it is connected with the other disciplines and uh, okay i think it's sufficient for today